Hey everybody, I hope you are doing great. This site Aditi Gupta, Data and Business Analysis Mentor. This video is regarding, you know, the DAX function, the most important DAX function that can be asked in the interviews part two. So here you can see in the previous video, we had a discussion regarding more, you know, 10 functions, which is related to DAX. It can be basics to intermediate level of, you know, uh, DAX function. And here in this particular video, we're going to try, you know, to cover some sort of advanced DAX function and it is totally related to interview perspective, okay? So the first function that I want to cover today is a filter, okay? So filter function, the filter function allows you to create dynamic filters within your calculations, okay? So filter works, you have already done a calculation and you have already used two to three DAX functions. You can use filter on the top of that. Also, you can use it to filter data based on specific conditions or criteria. For example, you can see the proper example as well. And also guys, it's a pro tip to each and every one of you. Whenever you are there in an interview and especially related to Power BI, make sure they are asking a question related to DAX. You have to give example explain and justify your you know answer with an example okay because it can be a video call interview or a theoretical interview you don't have a data set you don't have a power bi in front of you so how you will explain your expertise you have in front of a recruiter using example right so how logical clearance you have in your mind that you need to show with the help of example okay so for example, you can calculate the total sales for a specific product category using filter. For an example, I want to calculate sales. You need to just write product category and electronics. Okay, here there is a product category, which is electronics. So here I need to find out a sales only the product category, which is having a electronics value. Okay, so this is how filters work. Now we have all selected. See very carefully. When you want to ignore slicer selections and perform calculations, understand one thing. When you don't want to use slicers and you not you need to perform calculations on the entire data set, all selected comes in handy. It removes slicer filters but retain other context filters. For instance, you can calculate the average sales for all the selected regions, regardless of other slicer choices. In Power BI, we can use the slicers, right? So in slicers, you can select anything and on the top of that whole, you know, the whole, an entire report will change, will customize, will interact. In that case, if you use all selected, it will ignore slicers. Whatever the slicer you are using in the report, it doesn't matter when you are using all selected. If you use all selected, it can ignore slicers and it will give you a proper value dedicated to the data set you have imported. Okay, very important interview question. Then we have a function called earlier. The earlier function is useful when you need to reference a value from a previous row during iteration. It's commonly used in calculated columns or custom tables. Can you see this? Very important. It commonly used in calculated column and custom tables in here. For example, you can create a column that calculates a returning or a running total of sales. This is also running total of sales. If you want to calculate the running total of sales and you need to create a separate column on the top of that, then you can use a earlier function. Now there is one more function which is called switch. Okay. So we mentioned switch in a part one of the interview questions related to DAX as well, but it's more versatile rather than that. Okay. So for an example, you can, you know, a dynamically categorize product based on sales performance threshold. So switch directly and commonly used in multiple statements in here so i want all of you to practically implement switch whenever you use a multiple statements and multiple dex functions together then we have a related table when you work on a relationship between tables as dax function itself suggested 
related table that means it will work on a tables itself related helps your retrieve related rows from another table it's specifically useful in scenarios where you want to aggregate data from related okay so it's specifically used for aggregate data in a simple and layman language you just need to mention that related tables can be used in the relationship between the tables it only used in aggregation of the tables and only used with the tables not with any other columns measures or any data type just core used with table which is called related table okay so these are the five you know advanced level of dax function can be asked in the interview you you need to logically clear in your mind that what these particular functions do okay so if you want get a very common data set okay you can just create your own data in a excel okay like 100 200 number of rows of data by just copying and pasting and try to import that data into power bi and try to do all these particular you know functions practically inside it okay and then you will able to logically understand when you do a practical in these particular functions your logical abilities will be clear and for you the memorizing these functions will be easy okay so if your theoretical concepts are clear now it's time to do practical in your system itself i want to do you know i want to show you more five uh, dax important functions before that if you want to take a screenshot of the entire slide you can take it okay and let me show you more dax functions which is i have designed for you okay so here we go these are the more five dax functions and we'll going to start with rank dot eq if you need to rank items based on a measures and handle ties rank dot eq is your go to function it assigns equal ranks to the tied you know values in here so if you want to eq means equal so if you want to give a equal rank for an example let's say two there is a 100 products and four to five products have a equal rank they have a equal amount of sales so they have a equal rank right so in that case you can use a rank eq function if you use a simple rank they will not consider all the products in a same rank they will give 1 2 3 4 rank irrespective of they have a same sale value if you will use rank dot eq function if they have a equal sales they will give a same rank to each and every one of the product okay so it is very important function just note a difference between rank rank x and rank dot eq okay this will be a for sure next interview question now we have summarize very important like i itself recruit a lot of power bi developers in tech tip 24 and summarize is something very important and i do a lot of projects as well so summarize is one of the handy and go to functions every time the summarize function creates summary table by grouping data based on specified columns you can use it to generate aggregated views on your data so if you want to summarize anything you have a multiple number of columns and if you want to keep it short if you want to summarize then you can use this particular function then we have divide as the name suggested when calculating ratios of percentage divide ensures you handle cases where the denominator is zero for ex for an example calculate the profit margin okay so you can just use divide this is a function divide sales minus cost and then we have sales okay so sometimes in the interview as well if the dax function and the dax syntax is very small then you can just say it verbally as well and divide is divide is like one of the very easiest function then we have a last date and first date these this comes under date and time intelligence functions these functions return the last or first date in a given columns useful for time based calculation such as finding the latest order date so if in your data you must have a date column let's say if you are working with a e-commerce data data set so maybe you have a order date or ship date 
okay so if you want to check out what is a first order date last date what is a last ship date then you can simply use a function last date and first date and you can then select a date column that's it very simple now we have a has one value use has some value to check in a column has only one distinct value it will be helpful for the conditional logic based on a single selection for an example like any column have only one common value or a one distinct value or a one unique value then has one value can be helpful these are a sort of simple tax functions but very useful in the project and real time scenarios so you don't need to you know justify the interviews mentality understand one thing in interview you can face a very basic level of tax functions at, as well it can be intermediate level or it can be advanced level as well okay so make sure that you go through with all these particular 10 tax function that we have discussed today if you want you can take a screenshot of these particular tax functions as well if you want me to explain some more tax functions you can write in a comment box if you want to add on something to these tax functions to these explanations you can let me know in the comment box as well do check out description for more interview question links tips tricks and uh, until then keep learning keep exploring just checking the tax function is not enough do and implement it practically in your system as well and uh, until then bye bye have fun please take care i will see you in the next session